Today I am making Big Island style Hawaiian surf and turf. You can probably tell by looking at me that I am a Pacific Islander. Yes, my island is a little bit north of Hawaii, but it's in the Pacific, so I'm claiming it. We were back in Hawaii for about two weeks this winter, and I was staying in this beautiful place with my family. 15 minutes from the nicest beaches in Hawaii and cow pastures, maybe five minutes up the road. Unbelievable seafood, obviously, in Hawaii. I thought, why not make a Hawaiian-style surf and turf? So I've got a beautiful tuna loin that just gets a little bit of salt and pepper and then is rolled in sesame seed. Apart from the belly meat, tuna is very lean protein, so if you cook it all the way through, it tends to get quite dry. So the best method to keep it moist is to cook it for two minutes, and that's just 30 seconds on all four sides. Just the exterior is cooked, and the interior stays completely raw, so every bite is full of flavor and still very tender. And the tuna was caught right there in the Pacific. This house is unlike any place I've ever stayed in before. It's made of natural stone, concrete, and sugi wood, and the walls slide open and closed so they can either go all the way forward in front of the house or back over the breezeway that separates the living areas from the kitchen and bathrooms. Even the interior walls that separate the dining room from the kitchen and the living room, those can be slid out as well, so the space is really almost infinitely configurable. Each bedroom has this incredible soaking tub where you can look out and see three main mountains, Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, and Hualalai. Panoramic views looking out on the Pacific Ocean with this beautiful stream that runs right in front of the property. When you're here, you feel like you have the whole big island of Hawaii to yourself. For the turf portion of our surf and turf, we've got locally raised grass-fed beef. A lot of people don't know there's ranches in Hawaii and some of the finest beef that's available comes from right on the island. Be sure to press the beef down when you first put it in the skillet and that ensures maximum surface contact, browning, and flavor. Once we've got a good sear on one side, those get flipped goes from high down to medium, and we put a healthy amount of butter in there. Baste that top until the steak reaches an internal temp of 130 or about medium rare. After I remove the tomatoes and the beef, I cook some broccoli and the remaining butter and seasonings left over in that pan, and then made a mash of locally sourced Hawaiian sweet potatoes, butter, and garlic. Let the tuna rest at least 10 minutes before you slice it, and then you cut it across the grain. Anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch thick is perfect to spread it out, and I'll usually serve this with a little bit of soy and wasabi. There you have it, Big Island raised beef, locally caught ahi tuna, sweet potatoes from the Big Island of Hawaii, tomatoes grown there as well. Everything that you see here is from the Big Island. So your nickname Cleaver has nothing to do with a meat cleaver? Not at all. And the nickname is Cleavage. <laughs>